All right. Today we're in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 22. Though you grind a fool in mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. Um, this, this is a, a God talks about fools a lot in Proverbs. And uh, what's the main thing? God says you need to avoid them because they can waste your time. And he's saying you, you, you could take a fool. Give them all the wisdom, and you, you could crush all the foolishness, all all the foolishness out of them. You you can take it, and you can hit every nail on the head that's going on in their life, the problem that's going on in their life. But here's the deal: of the what makes a fool? A person who ignores wisdom, who ignores instruction. That, that's what a fool is, right? Yet his foolishness does not depart from him. Why? Because they it's not because they can't, because they choose not to. And when they choose not to, they can be a source of frustration in their life. And that's one of the things I had to learn as being a Christian and being a pastor over my 33 years is just some people are just going to suck the life out of you. <clears throat> and sometimes, even though you love them so much, you, you have to let them go and realize that, uh, hey, they're, they're, they're being foolish. And foolish is ignoring wisdom on purpose and still doing the same thing over and over again. Insanity, right? Uh, it's a definition of insanity. And, and we need to be, and, and what happens is we keep pouring our lives into that person over and over and over again. We get frustrated because nothing changes. And and it, it makes us wonder, well, is God working? Why isn't it doing? And it actually brings down our our faith. It brings down our joy. It, it, it sucks the life out of us. And God says, you, you can't allow it to happen. That's why he has in the Bible verses, hey, sometimes you got to just dust the sand off your feet and move on. Um, you know, uh, I'll give an example from, um, I, I have a thing when I deal with couples, I deal a lot with couples as a pastor and, uh, they'll have some problems and it'll be just horrible going on and, or not even horrible, just, just really just not going the way they want to. So one of them, one of the marriage counseling tools I use is and everything I use is Bible. You know, you know, if you're going to give advice to somebody, make sure you give good advice. You use the Bible. And uh, and so, you know, he talks about, you know, going to the person. You know, you've heard about the Matthew 18 principle. You've heard about different things I've talked about. And so what I tell them is, uh, you know, and also don't let others, you know, don't go to others first. You know, don't, 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 don't that, because that's really going to destroy a relationship. Hey, let me go talk about my wife or my husband. Oh, that's not going to help you anyway whatsoever until you deal with one other. And so what I tell them is uh, go home. And before you go to bed, no matter what happens during the day, no matter how mad you're one another, sit down before you go to bed and spend five minutes talking to each other about how great that other person is. Something good about the other person. Now, what usually happens is the first night, piece of cake. Because they've been together. They 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 like one they, they at one point they liked one another. Okay. So that they, they and, and what happens, they they come of all the great things the first night. The second night, oh, not so well. And I ask them to do this for two to three weeks because that makes a habit. And uh, and by the third night, they're like, oh, this is so hard. That five minutes seems like five hours. But here's the thing. You got to realize anything worth having takes work, takes effort. And what's what's that five minutes doing every night? It's reminding them that they got with that person for a reason. It also makes them dig deep down to find, because they could say the same things every night. And they're like, well, that gets old. I got to come up with something new. It actually makes them, even when they're mad at one another, it makes them have to look at one another and go, yeah, that's why I wanted to be with that person in the first place. And, and it's an effort. Now, what happens is some couples take that and they go through it. And usually, like I said, almost always by day three, they're struggling because that five minutes seems like five hours. But when you push through it, it brings that spark back. And then when you get that spark back, then, then you can work with something. Now, now you get something that's moldable because when the relationship's dead. It's, it's all cold and, and, and brittle and hard and hard to, but when you get that spark back and that fire going in, things begin to become moldable again. And, uh, but here's the thing I, I've dealt with many couples over the years. And, uh, what, what happens though, is then they, they, they come to me and they go, well, we, I ask them when they come back to see me and they go, the ones that have done it, they're like, Man, things are really starting to change. Now, it's not an overnight fix, but it gets the process going. Then I was coming back, it didn't work. And I'll ask them, oh, did you do it for all the 14 or 21 days, depending on when our next session was? And they're like, nah, usually after day three or four, we just, we just, we just didn't do it anymore. I'm like, wait a second. This is what God's word says to do. This is, this is a principle from God and to help you. And uh, you're ignoring him. And on purpose, that's what a fool does, ignores wisdom on purpose. So then I usually give another chance and say, 
Let's start over. Let's do it again. And they come back. And uh, I've had this happen on many occasions where I've gone through one, 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 one cup, one group, one couple I, I dealt with. I did it for, I, I allowed them to restart four times. Shouldn't have done that. Just waste of time. And, and by the fourth time, the session was just, it, it, there was explicative this all over the place from the two couples because they were so frustrated. But because they didn't take time to get, to take a step out from the, 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 the anger and have a time of a loving moment. Where they actually thought about the other person. See, when you're in anger, you don't really think about the other person. When you're in anger about somebody, you're only thinking about one person. That's you. Oh, but no, I'm all about them. What they? No, no, it's not about what they did. No, 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 no. It's about how you feel about it and how you're hurt. When you think about saying something nice about the person, you actually got to really think about the other person. Um, and so there's a whole lot more that goes into the counseling for couples and marriages and all that. But my first step, because it shows me whether the couple really wants to fix the problem or not. And if they don't after the second session, like I said, one couple I gave four sessions, that was a mistake. But after the second session, if they if they can't do that simple task, then I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry, you're being foolish and I can't help you. Because you can't do a simple thing. How are you going to do the harder things? How are you going to do the bigger things? And uh, so, so because otherwise it it, 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 it it just pulls you down. And and, and, and I've learned that, you know what? I, I, I wish I could help everybody, but I can't. Uh, and those who really want to have it, you know they got they put the effort in, so uh, so so when you have someone in your life who's not listening to your wisdom, sometimes you just gotta. I'm sorry, I love you, but I I, I don't know if I, I love you so much, but I can't let you drag me down with you. Now, that's like sound mean, but no, it's not, because if they're if they're intentionally not going to take the wisdom, you, you you can't fix them. You can never change a person by yourself. You cannot take them and force them to change. They have to decide to do that. We just talked about Sunday night in our uh, "Don't Let the Enemy Have a Seat at Your Table" class, and uh, you could, the only thing people can change is their mind. You can't do it for them. But when they do, then God can do some amazing things. So yeah, so you have someone in your life like that. Hey, love on them, but also don't 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 allow them to drag them down with you. And because God doesn't want that, because then it takes away your joy and it keeps you from being effective, reaching others who you could reach for the Lord. I hope you have a great day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you're absolutely awesome.